T with T Quilts. Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and today is Wednesday, September 25th, and it is T Quilts Live, and it is 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're watching this at any other time, just know that you're watching an upload of the live chat. So we'll give people a few minutes to get in. I'll pull this up on my cell phone. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button for me. So I came in right at seven today, so we'll give people a few minutes to come in here. I don't have a whole lot to talk about today. I haven't done anything. Uh, that's sewing related until like right now. I've been like putting stuff up, so. <laughs> so let me go back to the beginning. My phone still says seven o'clock, so maybe I came in one minute before seven. <laughs> And I seem to have, like, my ear is popping. I'm hoping that I'm not getting an ear infection. And it is sinus time, so a lot of times the way I sleep, it's a possibility of my um, sinuses draining in my ear. So. so let's see. In the chat room at 648, we had Marion White. So she was super early. Thank you so much that she says oh good I can listen and bind my scrap quilt that isn't so perfect but it's almost done welcome to chat I appreciate you spending some time with us we've got Elsie here 651 say hello T and everyone from Southern California welcome Elsie we also have Vivian Calvi she says hi T from Alberta Georgia Slowing Down Joe is here, says hello from Oregon. Pat Bowman says good evening all. Judy Smith says hey T and everyone, lovely evening here in North Carolina. And we're supposed to have rain, so if we have some interference with the internet, just know that that's what it is, it's supposed to be chance of thunderstorms throughout the evening. Thinking of North Carolina having some beautiful weather. <laughs> June Billings is here. She says, hi, T and everyone. Quilt Gal says, hi, from Maryland. And I'm holding my ear to so that it can quit popping. <laughs> um, we got, hi, hey, hola, bye-bye, says, hi. <laughs> okay. Maxi Doodle say, thumbs up, T. Yes, indeed. Hit the thumbs up, people. Bonita Nance is here. She says, why did my alert say 7.30? Hmm, maybe I didn't change the alert time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember what it said, so you're probably correct. Joan Elkin says, hello. I've got one more block to finish. A quilt top, perfect timing. Good to chat with you tonight. Thank you so much. Dewana Montreal is here. She says, hi, T, and everyone else. And then Bonita also says, hi, everyone, and Miss T. Vicki Lemire says, hello. Virgie says, hello, from Ohio. I know, Virgie, you've been making some comments. I have not been reading comments. I try to go in and read a batch at a time, and then I, you know, I get so busy. But I haven't been back in the comments to read them. Maybe I'll pop over there for a bit and see what's in the comments. Uh, L.A. Quinn says, hi, T and everyone. Dewana says, I'm still hand quilting a baby quilt. Okay, so that's what she's working on tonight. Uh, Maria Mayer says, hi, T and everyone watching while filling out paperwork for the Gale. That's another good task to do doing a chat. And okay, so we're going to take... We're going to put this person, um, hi, 
five user on this channel. So bye. <laughs> All right. We've got Deborah Richards. She says, wow, we need rain so bad here in South Mississippi. I can't remember. We had rain most of the weekend of our quilt show. I think Saturday was a good day. And then Sunday, it rained off and on the whole time of our show. And actually, when we were breaking down, we had to. I had to actually pack my car in the rain. So some things got a little wet. I actually... <laughs> I have my sweatshirt over there under those t-shirts. I had my uh, sweatshirt covering my sewing machine because I had my sewing machine there. Uh, Cheryl Abraham says, hello. Hi, Cheryl. Judy Judy is here. She says, hello, T and everyone. Maxie Doodle says, you have a great laugh. Always makes me smile. Thank you. Jacqueline Devon says, hi, T. It's Jacqueline and Tyra from and over Minnesota and it's starting to rain here I finally caught you live when I'm home well welcome to the live chat appreciate you stopping in been seeing your name also in the comment section Deborah Richard says I love her laugh also Sonia Jones says hi T and everyone uh, let me see what this was that I hid Okay, so it's gone. And Maxi Doodle says, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Bonita Nan says, I found and joined. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Um, <laughs> Bonita, I accidentally hit your message <laughs> by mistake. I'm so sorry. Can you type it again for me? Diane 57 is here. She says, hi, everyone. Hi, Diane. Welcome back. Let us know how Tom is doing. Okay, she was, um, Phyllis Garner says, hi, everyone. Francesca Fino, she says, hi, T and everyone. Great cool show. Thank you so much, Francesca, for coming. I appreciate that. <laughs> we only got to talk for a few minutes because I had people in my booth. And I was hoping you would have come back, but we didn't really get to chat. So thank you so much for coming to the show. I appreciate that. Chandy Mackerel says, hello, T and all. Rain in Oklahoma also. Okay, so it's this Midwest stuff. Joan Elkins is saying, hi to Diane. Good to see you on tonight. And she's got buffering again. I know uh, we had some crazy stuff going on last week and. uh I had people here locally saying that they had some of the same issues that Eric was having where one time he had the video with no sound and then other times he had the sound and no video. So I think it's a YouTube thing sometimes, but tonight we may buffer. If I tell you I'm buffering on my phone, then it's due to our weather here in St. Louis tonight. And Bonita, I guess she was asking about the American african-american sewing circle i don't know anything about that pamela Tabor says hi t and everyone my hair looks like yours t free and gorgeous this is what happens when we have humidity high humidity from all the rain so the ground is wet <laughs> so i just let it do its thing today <laughs> um judy said judy judy says i do love t's hair thank you so much We've got Valerie Johnson here. She says, hello from Atlanta. Welcome, Valerie. Trey Manor Young is here. Says, hi, TNT Quilters. How everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? Well, I hope. Oh, she says she joined the uh, African American Sewing Circle. Okay, great. And that is in your area. Is that located somewhere else, Bonita? And Vicki Lemire says that it's also raining where she is. And Pat Moffitt says, good evening, T and all. So, I'm waiting on Benita to see uh, if that's an online deal. I can't remember. I know we talked about some of this stuff last week. And then I was getting confused as to whether you could join some of them online or were they local gills and she says yes it's local in charlotte north carolina so that is awesome 
Now, Bonita, you're in T Quilt's <laughs> Facebook group. I want to see some of your projects that you work on with that group. Um, look like we had another person come in. Hold on. Um, Gwen Spencer says hello, T. She came in. And Loretta says hi, all. And so. Just a wrap up, a quick wrap up of my week. From the time I left last week, let's see, I was busy working on finishing stuff for the quilt show. So I had finished the quilt sleeve and binding on a quilt top that I hadn't finished that I entered into the show, got those done. And then I also made, finished off those cell phone devices and I even made another 13 of them, got those all completed as well. So, what else? I'm trying to think. <laughs> oh, I had to make lots of like price tag things and I also made buttons for the vendors so that they would know who comes in and out. And I also, what else did I make? Oh, I made like vendor signs with their, their name so that they were over the top of the, um, over the top of their booth because most of the vendors were not actual businesses that had like formal signs for their group so that's what i worked on last thursday and friday and also well last thursday because on friday i had to actually go to the quilt show i was there all day from about 9 30 a.m until about 7 15 p.m because we did the setup for the quilt show and then of course we had the quilt show all weekend I was in charge of vendors as well as I was a vendor myself. And a lot of people have, well, not a lot of people, but some people have been asking me in Facebook and some people have been asking me in the YouTube comment section, how did it go? And um, there was one fact, well, two things made it a great show. I did not make money because I spent more money because this was my first time vending and I, I, I also elected to sell fabric. I was mostly trying to sell quilt back fabrics and then I also had 45 inch uh, a few boats. I'm just going to guess and say that I had maybe 35 boats of fabric. I'm just guessing I, I didn't even count or I don't remember the number. And I did very well on some some of the material some people i had some patrick loose tone on tone type and it was some people that actually collect his fabric so i had like maybe three people buy a whole lot of that particular fabric and i had maybe six or seven boats of that type of fabric i had uh, one boat of eyeglass fabric that the whole boat sold I had a, a yard and a half left after I got three yards off for myself because I really like that one as well. So I sold that whole boat. And the yard and a half that I had left, I ended up giving it to my friend who helped me uh, set up my booth. Uh, what else? Um, what really sold for me and what made the show was the lights that I have on my sewing machine. Now, I only had three of those lights to sell. And when they ran out, let me show you first. So you can see how bright this light is. And I'm going to cut off this light just so you can see it without this light. So I'm trying to, so it's off and you can see that it's very dark there. And I'm gonna try to go around this way and cut it back on. And now you can see how much light. So a lot of people, I had three of those lights and I sold them so fast that what I did was I started taking orders. So I changed my sales sign to a, I will order a light for you sign. And I ended up getting like another six orders for lights. And so I ordered lights. So that kind of saved me a lot from the show as far as things that I sold. I sold, a, uh, so that was six, seven, eight, nine. So I sold nine of the actual machine lights at the show. And then another thing that saved me was that I also made show shirts for my quilt gill. And I'll show you that shirt. I keep forgetting to show it to you all. I guess that was my phone that, I don't know what dropped. Oh, my iron. 
Well, that was really cute. All on my carpet. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this off. I have to clean this now. Like, what was that that fell? <laughs> Um, but I made show shirts, and I've already worn this shirt and washed it, so it might have some lint in it. It's black. But I made shirts for our quilt gill. And this was another thing that saved me from vending. Although I sold these shirts the, the week of the quilt show. So Thursday before the quilt show, we had a gill meeting. And I took orders for these shirts the month before, but they didn't pay me. Most of the people didn't pay me until Thursday night before the show. So, um, some people didn't order the month before at our meeting because they don't like wearing black. And so then I got personal calls from people asking. Some people wanted just a different color. They wanted green on their shirt instead of the red. And so I did that, it was still on a black shirt. And then some people just didn't want a black shirt at all. And then they uh, wanted purple shirt, so I did purple and gold. So then I ran out of the gold glitter, cause I only had like, I have like one sheet of color so that I can get a lot of the colors and see what they look like. And so then I had two more people want purple shirts. And so I used like a light purple glitter. So. For my shirt, I have the black one, and I also did a, a, another test shirt. This shirt is a new shirt. I just wanted to see what it would look like with the white inside of the basket. And so I did that shirt as well. I just didn't sell it. I didn't even put it out for sale because I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it for myself, but it is a new shirt. I took a lot of t-shirt orders. Um, I took t-shirts. I'm about to have another avalanche. <laughs> I took a lot of t-shirts for sale, and I probably sold, let me see, I probably only sold two actual shirts off of the stand, but then I had people that wanted particular shirts in particular sizes. So I, you know, I can't make every shirt in every size to sell, so I just made some shirts just so that they could be hanging there so people could see. And I've dropped off four, let me see, four, maybe five shirts I dropped off. And these are the last ones that I'm, well, one of them is mine. I think I got four shirts and one is mine. And I'll explain that. So this shirt here is a customer shirt. She want a ladies large. I love to quilt with the pattern vinyl on a ladies short sleeve. So that's a customer shirt. I just thought I'd share them with you since I didn't have a topic today. One lady wanted this shirt made, so I made this shirt for her. I did not have this shirt <laughs> hanging, she just wanted it made, so I did that. And then this one, I gave this shirt away. Our gill have a brown bag raffle where they collect items from either guild members or businesses and then they raffle those items off. You put, you buy tickets and then you put the tickets into the number that's on the product that you want. We have bags for those. So somebody won the shirt that I donated and it was so funny because I put in a large shirt and, but their husband put the tickets in the thing and wasn't paying attention to the size on the shirt. Well, she couldn't wear a large. So I made her a 3XL of the I Am A Missouri Quilter. I'm trying to make sure you can see. So I, I just, this was just an exchange out shirt. And then this shirt I made for myself in long sleeves. And I just wanted to show this one because this is uh, the new T-Gear number one shirt where I have the established shirt, what I have on. So this is the shirt here that's number one. And what I forgot to do was put my website <laughs> underneath. So I uh, got this shirt for myself and I just made it in long sleeve. And it is with the web address. So that's the only difference in the two shirts. And if anybody is interested, T-Gear shirts are $15. You can, that's for sizes up through XL. 
If you are 2XL or higher, it's $5. And if you want long sleeves, it's $5. If you want a female shirt, and if I have the color, <laughs> it's another $3. So just so you know what the prices of the shirts are, because people are asking me, and I have never, I need to make like a video and put that kind of stuff up. I did sell, so that's another thing that saved me was t-shirts in general saved me with that show. And then also these lights. So with those two things, I really did okay at the show. Um, I did sell a few of the device stands, the ones that I, I had put on the I Love to Quilt. I don't know if I showed it to you all. I think I did last week. So it's like this where I had I Love to Quilt. I kept this one for myself. So, yeah. Uh, what else? Um, I had like the pin more where you have to put those things onto the safety pins i had like 500 of those pins when i used to base my quilts on the floor and then one of my subscribers also sent me some of those and so i've got uh safety pins and start putting all of those things onto the actual pins and then i made containers and i actually sold some of those and i also sold flathead pins and the other ones were the bind the uh, quilters binding clips. I sold a lot of those. These clips. We call them quilters clips, but they're just like those little clips. So I sold a lot of these. So um, I had a lot of things in my booth that tried to make reasonable. I tried to put a lot of different things in my booth so that I would have a lot of different people to come in and see what was going on. And what else did I do? <laughs> Trying to remember because it seemed like so far away. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. If I remember anything else, I'll tell you. I did sell. A, I have license plate frames that says um, "Wild and Crazy Quilter" on board, and then another one that says going to pieces i'd rather be quilting so i sold a few of those as well and i'll do a separate video of just my decal so that it's not all confused up into a video and maybe eventually i would do one with the t-shirts as well maybe um so that it's just a separate video because people keep asking me what do i have to sell and i it's very difficult for me to put I can probably put my decals on my website. I'll just have to sit down and do that. But it's difficult to do the t-shirts because of how to order on my site that doesn't, I, you have to put, I have to put like a different one for each different size when the price go up. And that's where it gets so confusing for me. And I don't have any help with this. So I'm not uh, tech savvy when it comes to web setup and all of that. I just kind of do the best that I can. So. That's where I am right now. Let me go check the comments. And if I think of anything else that I wanted to share with you, I'll let you know. Let's see. Okay. I can't remember. I know I didn't see. I know I said Pat Moffitt was here. And then I said Gwen Spencer says hello, T. And then I said, Loretta. <laughs> Diane57 says she rebooted and she's having no difficulties now. We got Shirley Rayleigh says, greetings from Rome, Georgia. Welcome to the live chat. Appreciate your time. Francesca says, T, how is your foot? Looks like you got some rest. Uh, Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I don't know what happened on Friday doing setup. I sprained the top part of my foot and it hurt so bad that by the time I got through at 7 15 p.m. and I didn't even realize I had hurt it so I'm just walking normally and all of a sudden your brain says your foot hurt and so I'm like okay my foot hurts so I'm steady moving then all of a sudden I start to slow down <laughs> because my foot hurt so bad I was barely able to walk and then by the time I left out of there, you're talking about a big, drastic, noticeable limp. 
So I went home that night. I had on tennis shoes. I had on a pair of Nike tennis shoes. And so I went home, I made sure I elevated my foot when I went to sleep, switched the positions a couple of times to make sure I wasn't doing any more damage to it while I was asleep. And the next day I decided, you know what, if you have on tennis shoes and your feet hurt, then you don't need to be wearing those shoes. So I put on my Birkenstocks and I walked in the Birkenstocks all day on Saturday. And do you know my Birkenstocks are the ones that made my foot not hurt? So they may not be the prettiest shoes, but they are the most functional and great shoe if you're having issues with your foot. So that's what cured my foot problem from a sprain. And I don't know how I got it when I had on support tennis shoes. It was just the craziest thing. But yeah, so thank you, Francesca. I forgot all about that, but it's much, much better. I had very, I had like minimal pain on Sunday and then Monday it just gradually disappeared and I haven't had any more pain in my foot. And I've been wearing my Birkenstocks every day. I got, well, I got three pair, but I got two pair that are the real good arch supports because I got a pair of those plastic ones and they're, they're not the same as true Birkenstocks. They're Birkenstocks, but they don't have that cork bottom. You need the cork bottom. So yeah, but much better today. Thank you so much. Linda DeVito is here. She says, hi T, welcome from Rockaway, New Jersey. And Loretta is reminding everyone, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And Joan says, did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. I saw a lot of people. We also had, thinking of the quilt show I had, that's what I forgot. I wanted to thank Kathy and her sister Eileen they came all the way from ohio kathy used to live in st louis area years ago and she moved back to ohio and she came with her sister just for the quilt show during this time so thank you all so much she even attended the tea quilts first retreat last year that we had in hamilton missouri so very good supporter of my channel of my quilt gill so i appreciate that very much and i i had a whole lot of fun <laughs> kayla uh avila says hello everyone hi kayla kayla's probably got her sewing machine humming too she's very prolific phyllis Garner says t i want to order a light um i don't have any I, well let me let me back up i have two lights <laughs> so when I get to, through the comment section, I will let you all know. The light is $30, and then it'll be plus shipping. So you don't have to pay tax when you're ordering on, you know, this way. Whereas when I was vending, those people that bought them had to pay, pay tax. And now I can't find a piece of paper to write on. Because I don't remember anything when I walk out of here. <laughs> okay, hold on. So, light. And I'm going to put down in order because I can see if just in case somebody else is asking. So, Phyllis. The lights should be here either. I ordered them on Monday. They were supposed to come today. So, I looked at the tracking today. It was shipped out of Texas and it was still in Texas. So, I'm not sure if they're going to get here tomorrow or friday but uh, i ordered i sold uh the three i had at the show i ordered eight more and six of those are already gone so if phyllis wants a light it'll be whatever it is plus shipping so i'll package it up and see what the shipping is phyllis send me a note through email so i can send you a paypal invoice for it and then Deborah Richard says, what kind of light is that? It is an LED sewing machine light, and it's made by Babs Enterprises. Phyllis says, has anyone, oh, Diane says, nice job, T. I almost skipped that. Thank you, Diane. Phyllis Garner says, has anyone seen or used a mini Oliso iron? What do you think of it compared to Clover? I have not used the Oliso iron, Oliso iron. So if anybody has information on it, I'd be happy to know about it. And Diane said, T, will you be vending at Houston? Uh, no. 
<laughs> now, if somebody wants to order a shirt and want me to bring it to Houston, I will be more than willing to do that. But as far as me vending, no, it costs like thousands and thousands of dollars to vend at national quilt shows. And your girl ain't making money like that, okay? <laughs> So, no, I will not be bending at any national shows for a long time. June Hansen is here. She says, hi, Miss TNO. Hi, June. And I saw your note filler saying you will send an email. And the reason why I tell you to do that is because I need to have your email address. And then also, Phyllis, let me know what state you're in because your state and city, because that's what it will tell me through PayPal how much the shipping is. Um, let's see. We got Lucy Jackson here. Hi, Lucy. Welcome. She says, hi, Miss T and all. My brother Ray is here. He says, hey, sis, I'm here. And he says, hi to everyone. Diane says, I love my Texas quilter shirt. Yes. And that's the thing, too, with those shirts where I say I'm a Missouri quilter. I've made those in Illinois, Wisconsin, California, whatever state you want me. If you want me to make a personal shirt for you, all you got to do is email me, tquilts at tquilts.com. Now, that shirt is $20 for sizes up to XL and also $5 for sizes over XL. And let me just show it to you one more time to show you why it's $20. I have to sit here and weed out all of this little bitty all of those little stitch dots i have to weed that out and so that takes a lot of time and that's why that shirt is more than the other shirts because of the time that it takes for me to weed it out but um it's really pretty and i love it and then it takes a full page of my vinyl that's why it depends on your state and how your state is shaped i'm mostly using a full page of vinyl for that um Let's see. Pamela says, I like that color. Yeah, I have this. Uh, she's talking about this color. <laughs> I have this. It's called Texas Orange. And I have that shirt in a short sleeve. And I love it so well that I wanted to wear it during the winter as well. So I went and got me a long sleeve. Um, June Hansen says, like all your shirts. Thank you, June. Slowing down, Joe. So long sleeves, yes. <laughs> So if you are interested in any shirts or anything like that, just email me what you're interested in, what color, what size, whether you want long sleeves or a lady v-neck, and then I can tell you what those prices are. Also, give me your city and state so I can check and see how much it would be to mail to you. Because I would have to package that item up and then weigh it so that I can know the shipping. And the farther away you are from Missouri, the more they charge to ship. So I wish the post office would have just stayed with the um, priority mail in the envelope just being one price, but they didn't. They stopped that. <laughs> Pamela says, Brother Ray in the house. <laughs> Phyllis says, see, tell us more about the light on your sewing machine. I think, did I show it to you already while I was talking, or are you all still needing more information about the light? I think I've said where it's, what type of light it is. And it has a dimmer switch on it, and you actually have connections that will let you, allow you to clip it onto your sewing machine wherever you want to run your cord. And then it also has disconnect connections so that when you get ready to travel to quilt retreat, you can take it apart, have your power cart separate from your actual sewing machine. So it has a dimmer in there as well as a, a disconnect for your power. So you can set it up any way you want. If you don't want the dimmer switch, you don't have to put the dimmer switch in. Melinda C is here. She says, hello, T and everyone. Cheryl Abram says, is it too late to send a deposit for the retreat? I am, I called about retreat the last place because we are over. Um, we did not have enough to do the hotel because we would not, we would have had to pay for the room. I need at least 20 to get that room for free with having two people in each hotel room. So I was not able to get to the hotel room. 
I'm looking at another retreat center and that will handle us or could handle our number. I think we're somewhere around 14, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. And I'm waiting on that lady to call me back. I haven't heard from her. And I worked at home yesterday unpacking some of the stuff that I had uh, for vending. And I'm still working on that because I didn't finish today because my mom had doctor's appointments. And then I had to take her uh, do all of her shopping today. So I haven't been home today. But you can still send in for a retreat. It's not. When I get the cost of retreat, you will still probably have maybe another 30 days or so that you can sign up for a retreat. But if you want to send in a $25 headcount so you have your spot, you can do that. But when I contact this place, I'm just going to tell them the number of people that I have on my actual list so that they can give me the price. So that's kind of how it's going right now. But yes, you can still sign up for a retreat. stand you Eric <laughs> why is she talking Birkenstock shoes because they feel good <laughs> yeah Diane I don't think you ever told us how your husband's doing um quick gal says do you know how many people came to the show no, I don't have that number yet. That will be available probably at our next Gill meeting. Tricia Tello says, hello from Southern California. Nice to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> Sylvia Mayo says, hello, everyone. T, what kind of shoes helped you? <laughs> I got Birkenstocks on my feet right now. <laughs> but uh, got to remember the cork board the cork bed molds to your feet so when you first get a pair of Birkenstocks these are Birkenstocks you can see the name in there hopefully um they when you first get this this cork is very light and then as you wear it you can kind of see up here where it's lighter as you wear it it starts to get the oils from your skin and also this cork bed it starts to mold to the shape of your foot and it actually makes you hold your foot correct as well um when you first get a pair of Birkenstock a lot of people say they can't wear them because they hurt if you buy them at a place and they don't tell you how to wear Birkenstocks you're supposed to only wear Birkenstocks for like an hour for the first day maybe the first three days and then gradually increase like every 20 minutes so the fourth day you might be an hour and 20 minutes and then the next day an hour and 40 minutes and so on because they do hurt because you're molding that cork to your foot and it's gonna for people that are completely flat footed which is what I am that's why I have difficulty with my arch area and I had never sprained the top of my arch I, I don't know how that happened but the Birkenstocks even corrected that and I've been wearing these shoes every day since Friday when I hurt my foot, Saturday on, I've been wearing my Birkenstocks. I got three different pair, but two pair that are really the cork beds, which is what I've been wearing. So I'm talking about it again, Eric. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, gosh. But they work. <laughs> uh, let me go back. Um... Um, crusty old man beard says hi I would love to buy a light and a shirt okay so email me at tquilts it's tquilts at tquilts.com because I need to have your email address so I can send you the PayPal invoice and then it also your city and state so I can tell you what the shipping is and what I do is I'll just combine both of those so I don't have any more lights <laughs> for sale right now now if a lot of y'all want lights and want me to get them I can do that but I you know the ones that I have already coming 
they are all sold already. <laughs> Eric is funny. He says, start a GoFundMe for T-Quilt vending in Houston. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Diane says, no on the Oliso iron. I have a Sunbeam travel iron. Very happy with it, so check it out. Anita says, so Miss T, since Ray has been supporting your YouTube channel for a while now, do you both talk quilting offline? Absolutely not. <laughs> he'll just tell me. He'll come and like, he'll poke fun at me about something I may have said online. Or he'll just tell me that he's been there, but he hasn't been commenting or something like that. Or that he's been working in the yard or whatever it, whatever else it is. So yeah. Um, but we don't, he don't talk quilting. His wife want me to make her, she wants to purchase a tote bag. And I just haven't had time to make a tote bag. I've been doing so much other stuff, but eventually I'm going to get around to making her a tote bag. Um, Diane is saying Texas hooker, hook em horn. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh trusty old man says i need a texas quilter shirt wrist and i can definitely do that just and if you don't want it in black i got it just think about your heart is in red so if you want it on a different color shirt i'm willing to do that as well as long as i got the shirt in your size and if i don't i'll come back and tell you what i do have in your size so remo js says hello everyone from bowie maryland welcome and Diane says, I wish I could go. I think she's talking about retreat. <laughs> Loretta says, I love my strip light, except the dimmer is part of the on-off button. Cleo Preston says, hi, T. Hi, Cleo. Welcome to live chat. Lietta Bryan is here. She says, hello from Hannibal, Missouri. Goodness gracious, what are you doing in Hannibal? You're supposed to have been in our cruise show this weekend. <laughs> I was looking for you. Eric wants to know, is Debbie still alive? I have not heard from Debbie. Not even through emails to the group. I know she's probably glad that this is over. I know I am. <laughs> um, and Diane says that her hubby is much better, but still has a ways to go. Okay, thank you. We just want to keep praying for him. Keep him in our prayers. Make sure he's okay. Tiffany is here. She says, hi, T. Hi, everyone. It's a super storm, 50 mile per hour winds, heavy rain, and loud thunder, and awesome light lightning. <laughs> wow. I'm hoping that we don't get all of that. And Remo says, I have mine on also. Vicky says it's still raining. Eric says Birkenstocks are comfortable after the initial molding. Yes, they are. And let me tell you something about these Birkenstocks. They cost a lot of money. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna guess and say that a Birkenstock shoes. I'm pulling my shoe back up here again. <laughs> Birkenstock shoes cost about 140 to 175 dollars or so, depending on the style that you get. And then they have certain styles that are standard. This shoe here has has only came in for one season. I happened to buy it when it came into that season. The nice thing about Birkenstocks is they have very nice leather. And I have had this shoe resold twice. I just got it resold in August. And you can kind of see where they sealed the edges and everything like that. Seal the cork. And yeah. I've had these shoes probably about 15 years. I've resealed them twice. My other ones I just got this year. My daughter actually bought those for me for my birthday. And so I haven't uh, even worn those in yet. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Remo says hit that thumbs up. Thank you so much. Dewana says where can I buy them? Google Birkenstock shoes. And then we have a we have a store here in St. Louis area that sells them. And I'm not sure if 
you have a store in your area that will sell them. So just Google Birkenstock shoes and most of the time, or Birkenstock shoe store, and most of the time it will pull up the store that has them in your area. And I do recommend that you go in because it's nice that their sizes are in foreign sizes and they're not in your regular USA shoe size. So you need to go in and have them measure your foot so they can tell you what size shoe you wear. Now, you can probably buy some off of Amazon. Uh, I found those sizes are not correct. And also, I don't think that they're really truly Birkenstocks. So you do want to get the original Birkenstocks. Everything off-brand isn't good for you. And Diane says, I need me some of those. My feet always hurt. I'm telling you... <laughs> These shoes are a godsend when you, or especially if you're flat foot, but there are people with high arches that still wear these shoes. They just don't wear their instep down as far as I do. So it take me a lot longer to wear, break my shoes in than the average person. Oh, Eric says he's on the bus on his way home. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Shakita Pearson is here. She's been all over the place, all over Africa, having a great time. She says, hi, T and everyone. Joan Elkin says, like, sounds like a great idea, Eric. She says, I didn't know it cost that much. Yeah, and I remember when I first, like when I got my very first pair of Birkenstocks, I was so flat-footed as a kid that my bones instead of being flat in my shoes my bones was like my toes were like this in my shoes so they weren't flat so what as i was growing it pushed my bones up so i had to go to an orthopedic doctor and have my have they had to crack my bone at the knuckle on my toe so that they can put a pin in it to straighten it back out you talk about a surgery that hurt and then once I got out of that surgery, he told me to go get a pair of Birkenstocks. Now, I'm 16 years old, long time ago when, you know, everybody wanted to wear pretty shoes and Birkenstocks were not in style. So I only wore them in the house. But now I really appreciate what that doctor did for me because he made me aware of the fact that Birkenstocks are really good. They are worth every penny you spend for them once you break them in. You just got to, you got to break them in. They're going to hurt. You, you just can get ready for it. They're going to hurt when you first put them on because our feet are so bad. And then once you break that shoe in, they're the best shoe you have. You can walk a quilt show in these Birkenstocks. June said, oh, she's talking to Tiff. How is your design wall attached to the wall? <laughs> you see those yo-yos up there? Those are, my husband bolted those into, he bolted screws through the design wall into the studs in the wall. And then I used those yo-yos to cover up the uh, screw heads. So he drilled a hole through the design wall, through the stud, and then he put like one of those gripper things in this uh, wall. And I turned my phone, so that means that I'm going to have to go all the way back from the top to the <laughs> bottom comments, guys. Well, I thought I was going to be sewing, but I guess I'm not. But that's good, because I knew I didn't have a topic tonight. So, uh, Eric says, Ray probably just says, hey, sis, where's the pow cake at? <laughs> and Tiffany says, it's raining cats and dogs where she is um, in Lake... Havasa, Arizona, Havasu, California, uh, Arizona, not California, Arizona. <laughs> um, and this, and Jones said they need a lot of rain in Tennessee. Teresa Davidson is here. She says, hi, Tan all. June says, we had a bad storm yesterday, light rain, today, hell, oh my gosh. Remo says, I have pink. You have pink what? Did I miss something? <laughs> if I miss something, let me know. <laughs> um, Diane says the orange long sleeve shirt isn't 
is in Hook'em Horns, Texas University. Okay. It's called Orange, Texas Orange. It's the shirt color with Gildan. Their Ultra Cotton 6000 shirts is what I order. Macy's and Nordstrom's. Yeah, that's the problem with storms, Tiffany, saying that the ducky parts of storms is the internet sucks. Yep, and that's why I was, like, wondering if we were going to have some issues. It's spooling, like, you all are lagging a little way more behind me, but at least it hasn't stopped. <laughs> Diane says, great job for T's husband. Yeah, that's all he does is whatever I tell him to do, He'll do that, and then he's gone. He's like, you're on your own. <laughs> He'll lift and haul. Like, he helped me put the stuff in my car. I'd say 90% of it fit in my car, and then I put the other part in his car. So he's real good with that. Pat Bowman says, you can also buy Burks at QVC or QVC online. So probably, well, that, I think you need, if you know what size you were, if you don't know what size you were, at least go into the stores and make sure you know what size you need to buy. That's real critical so you have a good fit. Joan says, I meant the cost of the show in Houston. Eric's idea for GoFundMe, that is a good idea. Okay. Y'all crazy. <laughs> I think, I can't remember. I think for like one booth, um, my friend told me it was like, like somewhere around 2,400 or something for just one eight foot section. And that's why my friend from Iowa Quilts don't vend at Houston because she needs like two to two and a half boots. So she doesn't vend at Houston. And I think when you get that same thing at AQS, she might be spending around, she gets like her two of her boots for like 1,500 or something, her two and a half. I can't remember. But yeah, it's expensive to vent. I was totally surprised when I started asking the questions because I was thinking maybe I might want to be a vendor at these uh, national quilt shows, but no time soon. <laughs> Kayla says, JC Penney's has a good sale on Birkenstocks. So we're getting some good advice on where to get your Birkenstocks from. And Eric says a 10 by 10 booth is like 700 Not at Houston. Because <laughs> at Houston, it was like over $2,000. They're expensive. And my local quilt show, my local quilt show, we only charge $50 for one table. 85 for two and then i think it was like 100 or 120 for three tables something like that so we were very reasonable with our rates okay trying to check something on my phone real quick okay so I think I have gone through the comments. Hold on. <laughs> and Diane says, I need a GoFundMe. He'll be sick, no work, no paycheck. <laughs> Laughing out loud. Got that right. Plus, oh yeah, then he says, plus if you need outlets for electricity, that's extra. So that's also, they even charge you for internet hookup. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe that's why you know, by the time you add all the things in that they need, the cost is so high because in order for you to collect electronic payments, you're going to need to have access to the internet unless you've got a cell phone that has an unlimited plan. The last thing you want to do is not be able to take somebody's payment because you ran out of personal internet usage. So, yeah. And Loretta goes, I don't understand why they charge so dang much. Because they can. And the funny thing is, these places have waiting lists for people to vend with them. They, you know, there's a waiting line 
that you need to be and you have to be approved to be inside their bending at some of them so yeah because they can and that's the same thing that crusty old man beard said and crusty said the same thing vicky says homemade banana bread here she comes i guess <laughs> she must be at home baking And Diane said, that's a lot for one boo. The venue, I, venue fee, I think, is half a meal. Oh, for them to rent the spot is a half a million? Wow. And I'm sure, like, when those venue places have stuff like that, they also get a cut of your overhead ticket price as well. So... Sharice is here. She says, hello, everybody. Hi, Sharice. <laughs> Vicki, you're making June hungry. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, I don't even have anything else to say. We've been on here almost an hour. If you all got any quilt-related questions, <laughs> I can answer those for the last few minutes. Um. Oh, I did have some questions. Let me go to my... No, I'm in YouTube, but I got to go to the YouTube again without, I'm going to, uh, without getting out of the comments, I think. It won't let me. Hold on. Community. That's not what I want then, is it? I was trying to find, uh, where I had comments. inbox <laughs> everything is different when you get on a different device so let me see if i can go over here and see crusty says i'll email you about the light and shirt after this okay thank you so much and i'll get it in the mail for you oh i gotta wait for your light to come in though so but i'll get it in the mail as soon as the light come in either tomorrow or friday Loretta says, I would say vendors should not even go. See how long they would charge outrageous prices for the booth. And the reason why they go is because even though they don't like paying that money for the booth, that's those events like that are their high selling points. People just don't go to them. Like if somebody is selling, say like um, the Aliso Irons, they're selling more Lisso irons at an event than they do when they ship them out to people in the stores to sell. It's just weird what the quilting conventions will do for sales. And so people are going to do that. And even if they don't sell you that one, they know that you're putting them into the stores. And then you have all of the small businesses, people like me who vend at those events, that's how they really sell their money. You've got people that are selling long arm rulers, and that's how they get a big buck of money at one time because they'll go teach a class, and then they will be selling their goods. Now, my only problem with that is that when I pay for a long arm class and you're mostly selling me your goods instead of teaching me how to use your product, I don't like that part because I've had where people, I went, I, I signed up for a class probably paid about $150 for a class, for a half-day class. And then the people were basically just talking about their rulers. Um, we weren't doing a lot of hands-on with it. I wanted to do more hands-on and let's sit down and talk about, let's show me how they work instead of you telling me the 20 different types of rulers that you sell. So it's a, a catch-22 on some of that. Uh, Virgie asked me, do you pre-wash? Um, I used to, when I first started quilting, washed everything that came into my quilting room. And I did that because I was used to pre-washing when I was making clothes. And so I pre-washed everything. That was a long time ago, 1994, when I started quilting. Now I do not pre-wash everything. I only pre-wash the things that will run, like my reds. I make sure that I pre-wash those. And I may even 
treat them with something like some retain or something like that um, the reason why is because fabric is manufactured a lot differently now and you don't have to do all of that so I don't pre-wash everything I do a test to see if it's going to run and if it's going to run then I do pre-wash also when I wash my quilt I also put in those fab the uh, fabric color catcher sheets into my washing machine and I don't really have any problems with anything running in my wash so uh, do I pre-wash 95% of the time no it just depends on the fabric as far as shrinkage on that I know that's a concern for some people I'm living proof that having pre-washed fabric and non pre-washed fabric in the same quilt makes no difference i'm just telling you <laughs> people will tell you all these uh, quilting rules and they really don't apply i have done it many many times and i do not have a spot on my quilt that's puckered or pulled because one fabric shrank more than the other has not happened and i use all types of fabrics in my scrap quilts from batiks to regular cottons to homespuns i have them all in my quilt and i don't have any issues with that uh, virgie also was just making a statement saying speaking of quilts being too long to hang last time i was talking about how if i was when i was making my community quilt that it would be no longer than 96 inches because that's the highest poles that my quilt show orders and so we do 96 and it will not hang on the ground it would be about a half inch from the floor and Virgie is saying that the show sh she entered had the sleeve sewn at the 90 inch length so they wouldn't hang to the floor so that's a little bit more extreme than my gear but it's best to be overzealous than have your quilt on the floor collecting all of the dust in a place now some places will put like paper or even like white sheets on the floor but i just prefer to have my quilt hang at the right height if your quilt is longer than 96 inches and you're putting it into a show all you need to do is measure your quilt from the bottom up in 96 inches and you may even want to measure up to 95 inches and put your bottom part of your sleeve at the 95 and start sewing from there and put your sleeve on and then the top part of your quilt that's too much will hang over the quilt rod so therefore your bottom is not on the floor she was also asking virgie was real off in these comments <laughs> and the reason why i know you comment but i haven't responded is because youtube is not allowing my replies to your comments to go through unless i'm on my desktop i cannot use my ipad and i cannot use my phone and i have not been at my desktop i've been doing other work around the house or preparing for the show so that's why i have not responded but i do see your replies she says how did the quilt show go did you sell all your items hope so i did not sell all my items but i sold a lot i was uh i could have done worse i've done very well at the quilt show it could have been better and it also could have been worse so i'm always looking at the positive side of things i never take the negative I made pretty good money. Did I come out in uh, as a positive? No, because I bought a lot of fabric and you don't know what fabric somebody is going to buy. You don't know what, I bought thread snippers and pins and uh, quilt binder clips. I bought all kinds of things and you don't know if those things are going to sell or not. So I bought a lot of fabric that I knew all the fabric wasn't gonna sell out. So that's why I'm at a loss because I bought a lot of fabric. I also sold a lot of fabric, but I didn't sell all the fabric, so that's why I'm at a loss. But it's not a bad loss. I'm real happy with how I did for my first time doing a real big vending job. Normally I just vend and I'm just advertising myself as a lecturer, uh, a person that can do workshops, lecture at your guild. I have my patterns available for sale. That's what I normally lecture. So this time I actually had more things out there for people to buy. Um, 
June. Hanson says, thank you for your service and for sharing the quilt show with us. Was awesome. So she was looking at one of my, I think, older videos, maybe. Rose says, <laughs> I'm just reading some of the comments. Rose Wall says, you would be so proud of me. I went to the local quilt shop that sells scraps and did not buy a bag of them. I think that is the first time. Of course, I did buy some end of, let's see. It stopped. End of some bolt pieces. Okay. So, yeah. Just to uh, let you know, I do see them there. I'm just not at my desk. Um... Let's see. Quick Gail says at the Lancaster AQS, they have what they name the Renegade Mall, and it's filled with quilt shops vending. Not sure if their prices is at a Double Tree Hotel, and it's three miles away from the actual show. And they used to do that here as well. Um, because it was cheaper for them to vend. The only problem with being in a mall is that you also have to vend mall hours and not quilt show hours because you can't close your booth down. So just be careful if you are going to vend at a mall. Know that you've got to be there doing the mall hours as well. Okay. Ta -da, ta -da. Linda Price just came in says, hello, everyone. Eric says, most vendors pay the high fee so they can get their brand out there. Now we got Vicky in here. She's telling people how to make that banana bread, I guess. <laughs> um, Kayla says, how was your wool batting held up to washing? You know, that was the quilt that I put in the show and I haven't washed it. I just wanted to put it in the show first. So I will be washing that quilt just to test that. I actually used a wool batting on top and I put a poly, no, a 100% warm and natural underneath. So I will be washing that because I didn't pre-wash that batting. So I will be doing that. I just wanted it to get in the show. If I do wanna, and do, uh, she's saying, and do you dry it in the dryer? If I wash my quilt in the dryer most times, I mean, the washing machine, most times I'll dry them in the dryer. I probably shouldn't dry this uh, quilt with the wool in the dryer, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> it's already been in the show. If it mess up, it'll just be my bed quilt. But I, have, I don't think it will. I think it's just going to give me that old texture because I heavily quilted that, quilted that quilt. Some areas I left so that it would puff for the wool. And uh, most of it is densely quilted, so I don't think that it will. But I will wash and dry it when I wash that quilt. And then I'll let you know in a video how it turned out. Eric says, I like it after a quilt is washed. It again, but it's got that old batting that you had to quilt a quarter of an inch apart. And I just love the texture of that quilt when I rub my hands on it. So I'm like you, Eric. I will be washing the quilt and I will dry it. Uh, Cherie says, I wash fabric before sewing, and it takes away the vibrancy of the colors. I want to see it look new before I sew. Certain fabrics have a finish on top that, that they use in order. They put on the fabric so that they can print whatever patterns they're going to print. It's easier for them to do that if they put a finish into on the fabric. So when you wash it, sometimes you are washing away the finish, which makes it soft. It also can take some of the color out. If it's a color like red and it's going to run when you put it in water, then yeah, it could take some of the vibrancy out. So I do understand what you're saying. Diane says, pre-wash previously owned fabric because you don't know whose house it came out of, if you know. And that's true as well. Well, in that, Diane, just wash any fabric I give to and don't ask questions. <laughs> That's Eric. <laughs> Remo says, I will be at the Quilt Expo in Fredericksburg, Virginia next weekend. Have fun. 
I love the uh, AQS shows. Is anyone planning to come to Long Breach IQF next year? Anybody? <laughs> I haven't made plans this for now. If I, if I want to go to IQF or Sisters, and I'm thinking that January, just thank you. I, thank you. I, I take classes, like to try out sewing machines and buy products. And yes, I would most definitely recommend going to Quilt Show if you're interested in buying a sewing machine because they have almost every model there. They have the top of the line model. It's not going to fork out. Twelve to fifteen thousand dollars for an embroidery machine. For this video, we've been on here seventy-one minutes and counting. <laughs> I fixed it today, and I thought I was gonna sew, and I haven't sewed one stitch. So that's pretty. Before we go, I will see you all next week. Not sure how this week is gonna pan out. I'm still trying to work on quilting stuff. I have a friend here from out of town. I need to spend some more videos and continue to put up all this stuff. I'm trying to sort stuff back out from when I vended because I put quilts in the show. I also had quilts in my booth. Uh, I got to get it all sorted. So the stuff that's easy to put up has been put up. The stuff that's got to be sorted into particular containers is where I'm having the issue. So, so good night, everybody. I will all see you all next Wednesday, 7 p.m. USA Central Standard Time. Good night.